Now continuing with our series on the Pixel 7 versus the brand new Pixel 8 with both phones in hand, let's see exactly how Google has or has not improved the camera this year. Now of course, I am a little bit behind with this one, but hopefully this video is going to help some of you decide which one to buy. Now on paper, both phones camera setups are near enough exactly the same. So is there really going to be that much of a difference between the two? Well, let's find out. So what better place to start than right indoors with a couple of my own personal typical shots using my very own light setup. With the Pixel 7 on the left and the brand new 8 on the right, already within the first image itself you can see a clear difference between the two. With the Pixel 7 being a bit more saturated, especially on that left hand side of Pikachu, and the 8 somehow capturing a bit more white light as we're seeing right on Pikachu's cheek. And before you say it's a one-off anomaly, turning off both the front lights and just relying on that ring, you can definitely tell there's a slight lighter grading on the Pixel 8 photo. So yeah, already the Pixel 7 is definitely giving that oversaturated look, with the whole image being lit up by my ambient light, that pink. Whereas with the 8, it's giving a much more subtle, natural take. And moving to a much more relatable scenario, taking photos at a museum, what we saw earlier still holds true, with the Pixel 7 being more colourful and the 8 slightly lighter. So yeah, it's definitely a personal preference, added saturation or a lighter tone, and especially under this controlled environment, to be honest, it's really hard to select a clear winner, but that's until we head outside, where personally I think that oversaturation definitely takes away from the image itself. With here, the main flower standing out on the Pixel 7, but the other two in the back definitely do feel a bit more drained. Whereas when we compare this to the Pixel 8s, everything seems a bit more evened out across all of the flowers. I mean sure, the closest one doesn't stand out as much, but the tones on the other two definitely brings them back to life. So for those of you who want more natural shots, you want to lean more towards the Pixel 8. It's coming to the end of the year and London skies are definitely not that blue. Now putting that colour difference aside, this year, when it comes to pure detail, Google have stepped this up. Focusing on the darker parts of the image, here with the pixel weight, we can actually see the lines that make up the eyes of the statue, whereas with the 7, it's just about there. And zooming into the grooves of the stump, there's definitely a higher level of detail with the 8. Oh, and as for dynamic range, despite the pixel 7 images being slightly darker, and the 8 not only reaches higher level of whites, but with the dogs, is it just me or is it picking up extra shades? Just check out that face. And even with this next one, despite the darker blacks on the 7, I still prefer the photo from the Pixel 8. Now as for the wide lens, Google here had boosted it from last year's 114 degrees to now 125, which now means that you'll be able to capture much more within the frame. I mean just check these out, the difference is very noticeable. So hands down, if you guys want some ultra wide shots, definitely head over to the Pixel 8. Alright, so how about that atrocious zoom function that the Google devices have had for so long now? Here, you'll be pleasantly surprised to know that it's actually improved. I mean the detailed difference between the 8 and 7 is pretty large to be fair. I mean it's not the greatest zoom photo, but there's undoubtedly been an improvement this year. With the reduction in artifacts, this photo is almost usable. Now before we even jump into night mode, I don't really have to even say it, but of course it's good. Regardless of which phone you go for, with Google's post processing, you're gonna be happy. Now having said that, there's not really that big a difference between the two phones, but if I had to choose one, I'm going to have to give this one to the Pixel 7. Not only because the street lights are not being blown out as much across the image, but also because of this final pumpkin shot where that oversaturation that we highlighted at the start of the video has played to the benefit of the Pixel 7. So now let's move over to video. With both phones set at 4K 60fps and the standard straight out of the box stabilization turned on. And with me stamping away through the trail, honestly, I didn't really notice a difference between the two. Both phones had a little bit of shake every time I stepped. And combined with panning, both of them kind of weren't the smoothest. 
So yeah, if you want that smooth cinema pan, you're going to definitely have to play around with the setting options. Having said that, if you're stationary, honestly, the shots are quite nice. As long as you don't have that wobble from walking, the video is pretty decent. So yeah, straight out of the box, as long as you guys are not planning on doing some real gymnastics while shooting, either of the pixels will do. For me, there's definitely no clear winner. Both of them are definitely good for casual users, they're just sadly not at that pro level yet. Oh and as for zoom, just like in the photos, there's definitely been an improvement here, but yeah, still not great. And this is just a 7x zoom. And at night, expect a ton of noise, stabilization, it's pants. I mean honestly, just check these out. Regardless of which one you go for, both footages are, to be honest, kind of useless. I mean just look at that image wobble. And this is on a relatively smooth surface. With both phones being trash here, is it really worth having a winner? And finally, let's wrap things up with some slow-mo. With both phones allowing slow-mo up to 8 times, that's 240 frames per second. Working in exactly the same way, using that ultra wide camera to slow down the video. Now just like for the video zoom as well as video night mode, here personally I'm going to have to give them both a draw. There's definitely other phones out there such as the Samsung S23 Ultra which for sure can do much better. So what do you guys think? Have you been convinced to buy the Pixel 8 over the 7 or vice versa? Let me know down in the video description below which of the two you guys actually preferred. But if you guys ain't swayed either way, why not check out my full battery comparison video where honestly, you'll be quite surprised with the results. Now if you guys like this video and want to see more like this, Android customization tips and tricks, as well as home screen setups, make sure to like and subscribe. See you guys next time on Into the Parkiverse.